the decline of independent shops in Henley-on-Thames. Henley-on-Thames is a traditional market town situated on the south-east border of Oxfordshire. It is described as a small town serving a local and wider catchment area. The retail sector in Henley has increased dramatically over the past few years. The town centre is now home to big chain retailers such as Boots, Waitrose and Starbucks Coffee. According to South Oxfordshire's District Council's report last year, the main shopping frontage falls between both sides of Bell Street from the junction to Hart Street. Henley is the largest district in terms of units. Here is a table on Henley Town Centre composition of units. In total there are 251 number of units in the town. However, as of last year, 21 of them appear to be vacant. Unfortunately, a lot of these vacant units were once thriving independent shops that were loved by the community of Henley and many tourists. After going to Henley College for nearly two years now, I have noticed that in the centre of town, there are far more charity shops and coffee shops than I think is necessary. I found that a lot of the independent shops are located on the outskirts of town, for example, Friday Street. We want to know if there is a decreased amount of footfall in these areas and a future for independent shops in Henley. As of last year, the boutique that closed down was called Precious Loved, owned by a man named Tom Bulgaleri claims the town is becoming marginalised as a shopping destination. After sharing his story with the Henley Standard, he said, We're really disappointed. We have got really loyal customers and we have built up good relationships with other businesses in Henley. Sadly, the community of Henley are affected as well. Many locals and independent businesses often help out with events and this would be a shame to see go. We spoke to Lorraine Hiller, the owner of Hot Gossip Coffee House and Upstairs Downstairs, and she spoke to us about the decline of independent shops around her and what it has been like owning one of them for many years. Hi, yeah. So, as um, the owner of this tea shop here, how long have you been around? Uh, since December 2013. Okay. And uh, I've got a coffee shop in the town which has been open since 2007. Okay, is that Hot Gossip? Hot Gossip, yeah. yeah. That's it. How have you found owning both here in Henley? Um, it's a bit hectic owning two. Yeah. Um, I'm happy with just one actually, I yeah. realise that now. Okay. And um, But no, it's been fine. It's been a difficult time because yeah. um, there's been a lot of changes in the um, in the town, yeah. in the retail sector. So um, it has been challenging, I'll say, but yeah. I've enjoyed it. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. And when do you find is the quietest time of the year for your child? Um, about now actually, just after Christmas and then people are waiting for the credit card bills to come in after yeah. excess spending etc. And also the weather and it puts people off, we sort of go into hibernation don't we, until yeah. people don't want to really be out. And uh, so this is the most difficult time of the year. Okay. Have you ever at any point been worried for either of your shops? Um, yes, I, I worry for here because um, a tea shop by nature people just think of coming in in an afternoon and don't really think of coming in in the morning or anything so but except at weekends and weekends are very busy but in the week it's very difficult with the footfall and, uh, and also I worry about the coffee shop because we've had more and more all the new shops that open tend to mostly be coffee shops yeah. or eateries so um, so that's very challenging. Do you find it's difficult with the amount of coffee shops in Henley yet to find yours? I do because um, uh, you know, luckily we've got a lot of very loyal customers which is great because otherwise you couldn't survive with just tourism and without your regular customers so they're very important. Um, but it is very difficult um, you know you have sort of a supermarket offering free coffees in a in there which is difficult which does affect the local community yeah and um, so yeah it's been hard yeah. yeah a lot harder we've all noticed a lack of independent shops closing down yeah how do you feel about that um, yeah it's very sad actually but the rents are so high there are multinationals prepared to pay the rents because they can um, they open up a lot of uh, outlets and so they can spread the cost across them all yeah. but when it's an independent it that's your livelihood that's all you've got and you have to make a profit whereas um, they can afford to run some at a loss and so they will pay the high rents the rates are too high and we're getting pushed out to the side streets all the time because in the main stretch it's all charity shops because they don't pay the rates, so they move the charity shops in. But it would be nice if some landlords could look to uh, being a bit more 
reasonable with the rents yeah. and so that to allow more independence to take them. Yeah, so you think that's the main reason they've all got yeah. down there was because of the rent? Well, it's the rents and also it's a struggle with parking in the towns. Uh, you know, this town was never meant to take this level of cars yeah. and so uh, people will just not shop here, they'll go out of town mm -hmm. and so so that's the difficulty and it's rates as well that as a, a challenge rate and also um, uh, salaries and national insurance payroll and uh, now the workplace pension that's come in so they all take uh, an added toll on an independent it's very difficult to yeah. afford and um, would you say anything it has to do with anything about online shopping how, how much now as a generation we online shop? Oh yeah, I mean I think that has a big influence because it's like, um, I should have said that actually, because it, I used to think of like the industrial revolution when everything changed and in a way it's like another wave of that uh, because I do it myself, I know, I buy online yeah. um, but purely for time yeah. because when you're working mm -hmm. all day it's the only chance to get to shop is in the evening. And it's so easy now to send things back. It used to be a pain to get things returned, but they've made that easier. So I do think that's having a huge impact. I think um, people will come into the town, they'll window shop and browse, but won't necessarily buy really? too much now. Yeah. Um, do you think there could be a future for independent shops? Do you think we could, because in Henley we used to have so many and they've all kind of declined. Do you yeah. think we could get that back? I think that we can get it back and we should get it back. We've got a new town centre manager who's very proactive in Henley and, uh, and she's trying to help and uh, target the individual street and do special promotions. And we're looking at ways we can work together, for instance, in Friday Street where the coffee shop is opposite is a lovely new shop called Willow that's opened and uh, so I'd like to see that flourish and this cook shop on the corner so we talked about doing like a mini food fair for Friday Street between us and uh, to attract more business I think you know as much as anything we've got to help ourselves yeah. and uh, but if we can get some help from the council as well in doing that but I do think there's a place uh, because look how successful Machins is, you know, they're mm -hmm. independent butchers. Yeah. Uh, so I think that there are things that can come back, like a fishmongers and, and things like that. I think there's a bit of nostalgia as well at the minute. People mm. are looking back to how things were in the past and want that again. Due to high demand to fill these empty buildings, businesses are losing out as it is a tough market to make it work as an independent. If you're a chain, then starting out is easy as you already have economies of sale and can afford the rent. Boutique was a charming independent shop located on Friday Street and has recently been sold over. The shop sold nautical clothing, gifts and furnishings that reflect on the local river environment. She was kind enough and agreed to let us in for an interview about the closure of the shop. We've come to Boutique today to speak with Gillian about her recent sale for the uh, independent shop. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my first question is, how long were you on the market for? Uh, officially, not very long. Okay. Unofficially, uh, a year. Okay. But initially, I went through a business broker, who was a friend of mine, actually, and had someone very interested mm -hmm. for... So that lasted about two months. Um, and then I just got on with running the shop because it wasn't going to happen with that person. Mm. Um, and then I started spreading rumours thinking that in fact there was probably somebody pretty close by who'd be interested in this business so rather than fishing in a much bigger pool I decided to fish in a smaller pool and yeah bagged my bait basically. How long did it take to find a buyer? Well someone just walked in off the street three weeks ago and said I've heard that the shop is for sale um, and so we entered into negotiation pretty much straight away and it was a perfect fit. Um, and if it's not too personal, why did you want to sell up shop? Because I'm running essentially three businesses and I'm not giving enough time to Boutique and my other business is expanding rapidly and uh, I started Boutique as a business for my daughter mm -hmm. who's since moved abroad okay. so I've been running it for the, to the best of my ability but I haven't been able to expand it in the way I would have hoped and I can see a bright future for Boutique but I was not the person to take it to the future because I just don't physically have enough time. Is the person who's bought it now um, 
going to keep boutique open or is that other you day? mean in 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 its present guise in its present guise. it is she is yeah. um and i think that within a few years she will probably have a second shop somewhere else and she will most certainly have a really yeah. good online presence too but her intention is to stay in henley in this building and through your advertising did you find a lot of interest from people taking interest in that? i didn't advertise I, the, the reason that I did it in the way I did it was because I had realised that there would be somebody out there and that advertising, as I had before, if you like, on a national stage was not what it needed for a local business and that there probably was somebody within a 20 mile radius who wanted to work in Henley and actually fancy getting into retail mm -hmm. and that has been the case. Um, through running this shop, did you notice any, or did you go through any positive and negative changes within trading, um, for example? You mean in the last five years? Yeah, in the last five years. So, um, with the concept of footfall, was yeah. that an issue for you? It's a big issue in Friday Street. Mm -hmm. That's what I figured. Because, yeah. Um, yeah, it's definitely yeah. off the beaten track. Yeah. And uh, actually the town council could be doing a lot more than they are. And um, I personally put up some signs last summer which the town council decided to take down because they hadn't approved of them mm -hmm. and uh, we're still waiting for new signage and mm -hmm. we're missing a big trick in Friday Street. We could be like Carnaby Street in London yeah. um, and you know that's something that I hope that Juliet who's taking over the shop will work on maybe with the lady who's just opened the Willow Basket because these people are enthusiastic, they're mm -hmm. new to the street. Yeah um, and another factor is online shopping. Yeah. Did you find that that was um, something that was impacting the differences in trading? It, you can't really tell because if you've only started a business in the last five years, online trading has been a function of, if you like, retail since I opened. Mm -hmm. And we had two attempts, uh, expensive attempts, at having a web business. Mm -hmm. And I realised quite quickly that it's a completely different business model. Yeah. Um, and so uh, I wish Juliet the best of luck. I think she will develop that side of things. It's one of her strengths in a way that we haven't been able to. And again, that was just a lack of resources, really. We threw a lot of money at it and it didn't work for us. I think we were more successful in terms of the actual people walking through the door. Mm -hmm. And I think the other business is a different business model. And whether you can be successful at both, I don't know. Maybe for Juliet, it doesn't matter that if the whole online thing takes off for her, this will be her base for the online business and it'll be a bonus if she gets people through the door. For me, it was the opposite. Um, and I think you need a specialist in both areas because it is not the same thing. And um, my last question is, having owned this shop, um, how do you see a future for Henley's independence? Well, I'd like to be an, I mean, I'm an optimist. Mm -hmm. I think it depends on people your age. I think it depends if you see shopping in your local town as something that you enjoy, mm. then there is a bright future. Mm. Um, there's, you know, I, I actually have looked at some statistics, and I hope, hopefully you have too, mm. that shows that, that young people, and I'm talking about people who've not yet had children, and who are kind of entering the marketplace, actually really enjoy going shopping, as we yeah. did as teenagers. Yeah. Um, and. And I think that shopping now is a different experience. I think you have to, as an independent, you have to think about the theatre aspect to it. So your shop has to be really attractive. You have to have events, which we've done quite successfully, you know, and you have to be open, unfortunately, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. And that is a challenge for a shop owner, especially a small shop owner, because if you're going to be open seven days a week, you can't physically be working seven days a week. Therefore, you need to employ staff and it becomes immediately a slightly bigger operation which needs obviously more profit to, to deal with employing staff. So I do think there are challenges but I think people are going to be very very bored with the online offering soon. I, I really do. I think I cannot think of anything more soulless than shopping on Amazon or eBay personally yeah. um, but I can see that if you've got a young family and you're going out shopping is a bit of a it's a mission, isn't it? Mm. And therefore, you know you need X, you're going to go and buy it online. Mm. But I think for discretionary purchases and for gifts, and certainly when we see tourists in Henley, they absolutely love what Henley has. And if we dilute the independent offering, I think Henley generally will become much less attractive. 
whether it be for tourists or people just coming in for the day from London. Yeah. So I think, you know, I'm just thrilled that Boutique is there to kind of answer that demand whether it be for locals who've got friends visiting and go, oh, let's go and have a look at Friday Street. It's a beautiful little street. It's full of quirky shops. Here are some of the street interviews where we gathered information on the busy public of Henley. Do you tend to shop online or uh, do you tend to like, go to the shop? Depends what I'm buying. If I'm shopping online, I'll go for clothes. Yeah. If I'm shopping for like makeup, more come to booths. Like yeah. Do you regularly shop online or do you always come out and shop? Why don't you shop online? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. No, I just feel I like to support my local shops as much yeah. as I possibly can. Yeah, that's good. I get all I need without going online. Mm. Yeah. Why have you gone to Henley today? Just got to meet some friends for a coffee. What do you think about the shops in Henley? They're all pretty much the same. Just coffee and clothes shops, isn't it? Yeah. Do you think that we have enough independent shops in Henley? Do you think there's quite a few, but the chain sort of overhauled in there? Yeah. Starbucks and Costa. Do you feel Henley needs more independent shops? Yeah. I feel like it might need like some higher, rather than, than just M&Co, yeah, yeah. yeah, and stuff like that, bring in some more high-end. Yeah. We should have more MD young people. I think because the college is there, you get all the young people coming in, it's not a lot for them. Yeah. Our last stop was to speak to the owner of the latest independent shop to arrive to Henley, Willow. We talked about what it's like to open a small business, especially in an area of some decline. When did you first open Willow? Um, I opened on the 25th of February, um, on a Saturday. Um, and what made you choose Henley for your business opportunity? Um, well, I'm quite a local girl. I lived in Marlow all my life. Um, and so I've been busy looking around for possible opportunities. Um, rates are quite high and rents for little shops. But I was very fortunate to find this one and um, it's just a perfect location. And um, are you new to business or have you traded before elsewhere? Um, well, I had a willow basket 10 years ago, but um, it was a catering business. So I've held on to the name mm -hmm. and just changed the actual business itself. Are factors such as rent and business rates going to affect your business, do you reckon? Well, hopefully it won't affect it because I've thought about it quite carefully mm -hmm. and I have gone for somewhere that's not too expensive. So that isn't my main drive, is to make my rent, I'm looking at it more as a lifestyle business yes. and something that hopefully people will enjoy coming into the shop, um, but I won't have the pressure as much as I would have had with other properties that I've looked at um, to, to cover my overheads. What's the clientele for this store? <coughs> well, I've had lots of um, young mums um, and not so young mums coming in with their children and um, they're all trying to set a good example by um, showing them how shops used to be um, when you can have personal service and come in and choose even a small amount to try something mm -hmm. and then come back and that's a bit novel for them to see that yeah. um, and also I've had um, people of every age, age range coming in mm -hmm. lots of um, retired people coming in saying oh my word this is how a shop used to be and I remember when I was a boy and I could go in and, and have things weighed out yeah. so it's across the board really yeah. um, which is exciting. Do you um, value like a customer shop owner relationship is that something that's Very important? much yeah really important and that was the whole point of setting this up was the fact that it's a one-on-one -on -one with the customer and hopefully get to know them and um, what they like and also ordering things you know that perhaps I haven't got already so that I can um, serve them better. And um, my final question is how do you receive your business in five years? Oh my word, well it would be nice to think that I'm well established. I know from taking the sign down outside that there's been lots of little shops starting up in, mm. in Henley, particularly in this, this shop. Um, and just to sort of progress on and be somewhere that people feel that they can come in, be comfortable and, um, and know what my stock is and also inspire them on to show other people that you can eat healthily but without sort of going overboard on it and yeah. um, it's all about the sort of outside experience as well and keeping fit yeah. and just a good general all-round lifestyle. This alleyway was once full of independent shops and is now known for being deserted due to all the shops shutting down. This is unfortunate as it's perfect for football acting as a cut through connecting Waitrose car park right through to town centre. Finally, to wrap this up, we put a petition together to help raise awareness to this ongoing issue. Let's save Henley.